Welcome to the Oasis. My name's Mike, and today I'm gonna to be talking about Stormland. Thanks to Oculus and Insomniac Games for providing me early access to the game for this video. Now, Stormland releases on the 14th of November as an Oculus exclusive title on Rift and Rift S. And before I get asked, it's not coming to Quest. However, you will be able to play it on Quest using Oculus Link, which is coming in the near future. And I'll have all the information that you need to know about that coming soon in a separate video. So make sure you stay tuned. This video will be spoiler free of any of the story from the game's campaign, but I will be talking about the core gameplay mechanics and the end game state, which is what happens when the main story ends, as there's a lot to explain. I hope you find this video useful, and without further ado, let's dive in. Okay, so I first got to play Stormland over a year ago at Oculus Connect 5, and since then it's been one of my most anticipated titles coming to VR. I was confident with the team from Insomniac at the helm as they're veterans in the VR development scene, previously making Edge of Nowhere, Feral Rights, and The Unspoken. At the time of this video, I've put over 12 hours into the game and feel like I have a good understanding of what the game has to offer. The story campaign provides around six hours of gameplay, with the rest of the game content taking place in the end game state, which I'll go into more detail later in this video. The basic premise of the game, which was shown in one of the early trailers, is that you're a Johnny Five looking robot gardener called Vespa, working on a planet that gets invaded by an enemy force known as the Tempest. You're attacked and left for dead, and after a number of years, the plants that you've been looking after all this time start to grow around you and pay back the favor by bringing you back to life for you to seek out your friends and retake control of the planet. So first up, let's talk about the core gameplay, as this is where the game really shines, in my opinion. Insomniac being VR veterans really show how far we've come in VR with a variety of fun ways to traverse the Stormland. You'll be walking, running, jumping, climbing, gliding, and slipstreaming across the clouds. And although some of these locomotion methods can be intense for some, there's plenty of comfort options to compensate. Whilst exploring the Stormlands, you'll be gathering resources, completing missions, scanning items to add to your index, and engaging with the enemy. And this can be done solo or with a friend playing co-op once a specific side mission has been completed. In terms of graphics, as you can see from the gameplay, the game looks stunning. When you add the incredible lighting and weather effects on top of this, it definitely ranks up there as one of the best looking VR games available right now. There were moments in the game where I'd be looking over a vast landscape with a huge robotic dragon floating in the clouds in the distance, which was just breathtaking. Obviously, with all these amazing visuals comes the cost of performance. I was running the game on ultra settings with an i9 processor and an RTX 2080 Ti, and I had to move the recording of this gameplay to a second machine as it was just pushing my system to the limits to do both and maintain a smooth frame rate. However, there's plenty of graphical settings to tweak to ensure that you can get the game running smoothly on most systems. Throughout the game, you'll find and unlock a range of weaponry, which will provide different playstyles from rapid firing SMGs to grenade launchers and sniper rifles. You can go into situations guns blazing, or you can sneak into bases using long grass as cover to then tag enemy positions with the visor to then sneak up on them and remove the cells that power them, which then can be used as health packs. It's totally up to you, depending on your own personal playstyle. You have up to three gun mounting positions on your android body to holster the weapons, which can be found in loot crates or scavenged off dead Tempest. Each of the weapons has an alternative firing mode, which is activated by holding the weapon with two hands, which triggers an awesome transformation between the weapon modes. Ammunition is limited though, so breaking down dropped enemy weapons is key to gathering alloy and ammunition for your favorite guns, which is done by grabbing the weapon at the top and pulling it apart. However, it's incredibly frustrating when this happens by accident in the heat of combat, which happened to me at least a dozen times. You also have access to various grenade types. Pushing the button on top of a grenade to activate it and then throwing it in the middle of a group of enemies is incredibly satisfying. Alongside weapon slots, you also have two slots on your chest to store collected grenades or health packs, which can be used later. Everything about the character design looks and feels great in VR. Your robotic hands and arms move as they should with the correct elbow positioning, and looking down to see your whole android body is just awesome. 
Grabbing for weapons or grenades feels natural, and small facial movements when interacting with co-op players makes the robotic avatars really come to life. Bringing either hand to your headset activates a visor mode, which highlights enemy positions and resources. It also provides a tool for you to scan the wildlife and fauna to unlock more information about the world around you. You also have access to a map and mission objective displays, which are accessible on your left hand. Upgrades are handled well and slowly introduced during the story campaign. Pulling off your robotic arm and upgrading it on the workbench is an awesome gameplay mechanic that never gets old, although occasionally when trying to remove my arm, the gun from my back holster would keep gliding to my hand, which was kind of annoying. Just like most open world RPGs, a big part of Stormland is about collecting resources to level up your character. The main resources in the game are alloy, which is found scattered across the world, which is used to craft weapons and items such as ammo and health packs at different workstations. Bioenergy is found in plants which you crush, and once you've collected enough of this, it's transformed into an Aeon Bud. Aeon Buds are then used to upgrade your character's attributes. For example, you can upgrade your character to be able to do a double jump, which I personally found was really useful. And then finally you have Growth, which is earned by scanning items and adding them to your index, which is also used to upgrade your character by unlocking various mod slots. Alongside these resources, you'll also find human artifacts to scan, which provide more information about the Stormland prior to the Tempest attack. Now you can play the game cooperatively during the story or end game state, and in my testing with fellow content creator Gamertag VR, it worked flawlessly, and we were able to explore the Stormland together. Playing with someone else definitely makes the game much more fun. Racing across the clouds and climbing massive structures together were some of my personal highlights. At times though, we would get frustrated at the repetitive tasks, which we had completed many times before, and we even resorted to splitting up to search for objectives just to get through those sections as quickly as possible. Possible. And sadly, there's no co-op specific missions whereby you really need a partner to work with, which I think is a missed opportunity to bring Rift players together. For example, working together to pull levers simultaneously or working up two adjacent towers with the ability to help each other out would have been a really cool idea. When playing cooperatively and joining someone else's game, the items and resources you've collected will carry over, although your progression will remain the same if you've not completed the main story campaign. And this brings me nicely onto the end game state. The end game state is a little bit confusing, and even for someone like me that's used to this style of game having enjoyed both The Division and Destiny, I had to reach out to the developers for clarification on what the game offers after the main story is over. Once the six hour story campaign is complete, you revisit the Stormland and your goal is to unlock more levels known as Strata of the Stormland by opening up a cloud portal on each level. Now to do this, generally you need to clear out the enemies in the immediate vicinity of the cloud portal, or sometimes you'll need to find and destroy jamming devices which are scattered across the map, which can be really time consuming to find. Once that's done, you'll need to rinse and repeat this two more times in two further worlds to ultimately reach Terminus, which is the highest level within the Stormland. In Terminus, you have to take down three generators and then attack a massive stronghold full of enemy Tempest. And once that's done, you've reached the level cap of that week. And this is where the cycling world comes in. In the garage in your base camp, you'll have a screen which tells you how much longer is left until the cycle resets, which occurs every Tuesday at 9am Eastern Time. The game has a total of 16 cycling worlds, so it will take you around 4 months to see and scan everything the game has to offer. If you've completed Terminus in that week, your progression is then reset. All blueprints and spent Aeon Buds are traded in in return of growth, which is then used to unlock even more character abilities, making your character even stronger. When you then return to the Stormland, the cycle brings new maps, new wildlife and human artifacts to find, with the ultimate goal of working your way back through the three levels and back to Terminus to take it down all over again. Now each time you successfully defeat Terminus in succession, the Tempest escalation level increases and this is displayed on the screen in the garage. When the escalation level rises, higher tier enemies come at you meaning that you'll need to spend more time refining a powerful build to take on the higher challenge. Once you've beaten Terminus on the highest escalation level of 2, you'll get a unique ending cinematic. However, if you fail to complete the Terminus again within the following two weeks, the escalation level will drop down again. And this all sounds awesome with months and months of content ahead of us, but the issue comes in the variety of the missions as they tend to repeat the same missions over and over again with little variety, which makes them start to feel like a chore. And what I found hard was a justification as to why I would keep doing it over and over again, as I had it confirmed by the developers that there isn't a big payoff at the end, like a custom skin or unique upgrade or weapon that rewards you for all your hard work. 
After defeating Terminus and experiencing a cycle reset myself, I felt like I had seen everything the game has to offer, and without a compelling reason or objective to bring me back, I just can't see myself revisiting the Stormland anytime soon. So ultimately, here's my conclusion. For me, Stormland is a game that does so much right in its core gameplay mechanics, but is ultimately let down by the lack of content on offer. I can't help but feel like the Insomniac team being acquired by Sony really put the brakes on this project. Other games with similar endgame states such as The Division or Destiny offer a roadmap of planned content coming in the future, but sadly that's not the case with Stormland. The game in its current state is what you get, and there's no future plans for expansion. So ultimately, would I recommend Stormland? Well, yes, if your expectations are set appropriately going in. The six hour story campaign is fun with an intriguing story, but the end game state is an endless loop of repeating quests that get old quickly. I'd highly recommend playing the game with a friend in co-op if you have the opportunity. Okay, so there we have it. That is Stormland. It has some amazing gameplay mechanics, some of the best VR has to offer. But the short story campaign and the lack of variety in the end game content is disappointing, especially when you consider that it's very unlikely that we're going to get any additional content in the future due to Insomniac now being owned by Sony. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Like me, are you disappointed about the lack of variety or are you still looking forward to exploring what the game has to offer? I'd love to know in the comments down below. Leave a like if you found this video useful. Make sure you're subscribed for all my future content. And as always, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.